In this video, we are going to be learning about the properties of mathematics, and it's really the fundamentals in what we're going to be doing mostly in Algebra 1, which is solving equations. The associative property of addition and multiplication. Associative property of addition is when you have three or more numbers that are added, the sum is the same regardless of the grouping. So let's look at this example. We have parentheses around the four plus six, and then we have plus two on the outside. And what the associative property of addition says is that you, it's going to be the same even if we put parentheses around the six and the two. So we didn't change the order here, we just changed the grouping. And so simplifying this down, I'm gonna work in within my parentheses. So four plus six, that is equal to 10 and then plus 2 is equal to 4 plus, and then 6 plus 2 was 8. Then I'm going to continue to solve and simplify down. 10 plus 2 is 12, and 4 plus 8 is equal to 12. The associated property of multiplication is similar to the addition one, except that when three or more numbers are multiplied, the product is the same regardless of the grouping. So for example, if we have parentheses around the 3 times 2 on the left hand side and then we put the parentheses around the 2 and the 4 on the right hand side let's simplify down look at the order it's 3 2 4 3 2 4 that doesn't change the only thing we change here is the grouping where we put the parentheses and so simplifying down and solving 3 times 2 is 6 and then times 4 on the outside and then 2 times 4 is 8, and then times the 3, and then continuing to simplify down, you get 24 equal to 24. Next, we have the commutative property of addition and multiplication. Commutative property of addition is when you have two numbers that are added and the sum is the same regardless of the order. So it's pretty straightforward. If we have 3 plus 5, that is the same as 5 plus 3. And as we know, 3 plus 5 is equal to 8. The commutative property of multiplication is the same thing, except you're multiplying. When two numbers are multiplied, the product is the same regardless of the order. So if we do 4 times 5, that is the same as 5 times 4. So 20 equals 20. Next, we have the distributive property. So you have a number usually on the outside of the parentheses, and then you have variables or numbers on the inside of the parentheses. And I'm using lines to represent what's happening here. So you do 2 times 6, which is right here, and then you do plus 2 times 3, which is right here. The biggest thing with the distributive property is make sure that you multiply 2 by everything that's on the inside of the parentheses. So 2 times 6 plus 2 times 3. And then you simplify that down. And I'm going to show you that they're equal, that they're the same. So multiplying, well, adding what's in the parentheses, 6 plus 3 is equal to 9. So 2 times 9 on the left-hand side. And then simplifying 2 times 6, is which is 12. And then 2 times 3, which is 6. And then I'm going to continue to simplify that down. 2 times 9 is 18, and 12 plus 6 is also 18. So those are equal. Another example, bringing it in a variable, we have two parentheses, x plus 1. So once again, you're going to do 2 times x, which is right here, plus 2 times 1, which is right here. And then simplifying down the right-hand side, 2 times x is 2x, plus, and then 2 times 1 is 2. So that's how you would simplify that expression using the distributive property. Another example, similar to example 2, I brought in another variable here. We have 2 and then parentheses 5 minus x. So what you have to do is you have to do 2 times 5, which is what I did here, plus 2 times negative x. Now I know it says minus x, but that's the same as negative x. Now I'm going to simplify the right-hand side of the equation. 2 times 5 is 10, and then 2 times negative x is negative 2x. So that's how you would simplify that expression using the distributive property. Next, we have the identity properties of addition and multiplication. The identity property of addition is the sum of any number and zero is going to be the original number. 
So the identity for addition is zero. So it doesn't change things. So three plus zero will equal three. Five plus zero will equal five. Negative six plus zero will equal negative six. That's what the identity property of addition is saying. Anytime you add zero to something, it doesn't change it. And then we have the identity property of multiplication. It's the product of any number in one. And that's going to be the original number. So the identity for multiplication is 1. So for example, 3 times 1 is equal to 3. 5 times 1 is 5. 6 times 1 is 6. Negative 6 times 1 is negative 6. So once again, multiplying something by 1 doesn't change it. Next, we have the inverse of a number. We're going to do the additive inverse of a number first. The additive inverse of a number n, that's going to just be our variable, is negative n. So that when you add those two numbers, they equal 0. So for example, 3 plus negative 3 equals 0. So negative 3 would be the additive inverse of 3. Basically, it's just the opposite. So 3 would be the additive inverse of negative 3 and vice versa. So what would be the additive inverse of 4? A negative 4. And what would be the additive inverse of negative 8? It'd be 8. What would be the additive inverse of 1? It'd be negative 1. Okay, not that hard. Let's look at uh, the mul multiplicative inverse of a number. The mul multiplicative inverse is also called the reciprocal of a number. So if we have a variable n, the reciprocal would be 1 over n, so that when you multiply those two numbers, you get the identity, which will equal 1. So for example, we have 3 times 1 third. That's going to equal 1. So 1 third is the mu multiplicative inverse of 3. And let's do some more examples. What would be the mu multiplicative inverse of 4? It would be 1 fourth. What would be the mu multiplicative inverse of 1 fifth? be 5. What would be the multiplicative inverse of negative 2? It'd be negative 1 over 2. Okay, so you're just doing the reciprocal, you're just flipping it over, you're not changing the sign, things like that. We'll be practicing this more. All right, next we have the multiplication property of 0. Basically, anytime you multiply any number by 0, the result is 0. So no matter what the number is, if it's a large number, negative number, it doesn't matter. Anything times zero is zero. Pretty easy. So we have the properties of equality, and this is what we're mainly going to be using when we are solving equations. So we have the property of equality for addition. If you add the same number to both sides of the equation, the equation is still true. So that's why you have to add the same number to both sides if you're adding it to one. The property of equality for subtraction is, a, is if you subtract the same number to both sides of the equation, the equation is still true. The property of equality for multiplication, if you multiply the same number to both sides of the equation, the equation is still true. And then the property of equality for division, if you divide the same number to the both sides of the equation, the equation is still true. And last, these You'll kind of see these, but you won't be using them as frequently. We have the reflexive property of equality. So anything is equal to itself. So 4 is equal to 4, 5 is equal to 5, x is equal to x, things like that. And then we have the symmetric property of equality, which states that if a equals b, then b equals a. Pretty simple. And then the transitive property of equality is if a equals b and b equals c, then a equals c. Okay. 